as a web designer, sending out proposals is not something you can afford to take lightly. It's a crucial part of being able to close deals efficiently and setting the right expectations with your future client. But if you're spending hours of valuable time writing up proposals from scratch, let me suggest to you that you're doing it wrong. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my complete proposal workflow, including how I use templates to speed up the process dramatically, how I structure contracts to ensure both parties are protected, and how I go about recording personalized screen recording presentations to boost conversion rates. If you stick around to watch this entire video, you will have a complete step-by-step -step process you can copy and paste to ensure that you're able to get proposals and contracts out to prospective clients in under an hour. What's up everybody? How's it going? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Bailey Canning. I'm an independent marketing strategist based in Denver, Colorado, primarily working with my clients on branding, web design and development projects, and ongoing marketing retainers. Now in a second here, I'm gonna share my screen and walk you through exactly what my proposals, contracts, invoices, and screen recordings look like when I go to engage a new client in a potential website build. Before we jump into the screen share though, I just wanted to touch on two key principles very quickly so you can understand my proposal philosophy, if you will, and just also apply this to your own proposals going forward so that you're able to get proposals out to your clients faster and be able to close deals more effectively. First, I highly recommend you keep it simple and consider going to a very short streamlined proposal, something that's probably going to look a lot shorter than you're comfortable with. This was a big mindset shift for me to make about a year ago, whereas before this I had a very much more complicated, much more lengthy proposal because when I was first getting started in my business career, I thought that would make me look more established and more legitimate. And a lot of this comes from the book Pricing Creativity as well as the podcast podcast that the same author is featured on called the Two Bobs Podcast. And in it, they talk about this idea that instead of putting together a super long proposal that's filled with a bunch of corporate jargon, what you should simply do is aim to put together a one-page proposal that just quickly outlines exactly what you plan to do to help the client with their project. This way, the question becomes not do we want to work with you, but rather which option are we going to select to work with you. Number two, you're definitely going to want to leverage templates so that you're able to quickly and efficiently draft the proposals as soon as you hop off a call with a prospective client and that way you can get it to them in under an hour. As a self-employed individual, you know that time is money and that you quite frankly do not have the time to spend hours fiddling around making a super custom proposal and then ultimately, as I've had the experience with many times, the client doesn't even bother to respond. Or sometimes they'll come back to you and say that after further discussions within the company, they decided to delay the project or they need to revisit the scope of work or they need to find out how to budget it. There's a ton of different things in the sales process out of both parties' control that could completely derail the entire project at any time and it's no one's fault but it's just important that you are aware of this possibility and that you internalize the fact that you don't have hours of time to spend putting together custom proposals rather you just need to get a proposal out the door and then this way you can get to work quickly once they accept it. I do recommend that you templatize the proposal in a way where you're easily able to customize it and tailor it to your client's unique project. That's exactly what I've done as you'll see in a second. Without further ado, let's hop into the screen share and walk through my entire proposal process. All right, everyone. So now we are looking at my proposal as you can see here in Bonsai. This is what I use not just to manage all proposals and contracts and invoices, but also just a lot of the financial and project client management related aspects of my business. If you are interested in that, I recently made a video, which I'll link above here, but let's just jump into it. So as you can see here, you're going to see brackets, a lot of these places where it's simply where I need to insert the client name in order to customize the project to the clients here in this case. Now, going on down, we have a very simple introduction, nothing too crazy. My name, my email address is here, a little signature I made. And then we have just a quick proposal overview. Again, a lot of this is just a starting point and then based on the details I know about the client and their goals and their reason for initiating the project in the first place, then I may go in here and add more copy to flush things out a bit. One thing to call out here is that I will add in the proposed start date, usually a few days after the project is officially 
signed and ready to go. And then I'll let the client know when they can expect that the project or the website will be done in this case. Next, I put together a quick process overview going through every single step that this project is going to entail. This is important because while I did cover this in my initial discussions with the prospective client, it's very important that they understand exactly what they're getting into so that this way there's no confusion or miscommunication as the project gets kicked off. So very simple here, I just have every single step or every single phase of the project. I recently made a video all about my web design process in its latest iteration, so I will link that above here as well. But basically we start off with a strategy phase, in this case a strategy workshop I have it listed as here, and then there's a creative graphic for every single phase as well as a detailed text explanation. Then at step two is into the design, we're doing UX design. This way the client's able to visualize exactly what these wireframes are gonna look like, and then talk about how I'm going to be helping the client develop all the copy they need for the website. We then go down and explain that once the copy's developed and the UX wireframes have been finalized, then it's time to move on to the UI design process. And this is exactly what the client can expect here. Real life, realistic mockups, previewing exactly what the website will look like should we go ahead with this design iteration. As you know, there's gonna be a couple revisions. And then we move into the web development aspect of things. So once the client approves the design, then it's on me and whoever I might be working with to get the website developed and ready for launch. Then here we have a quality assurance and testing phase as well. So I basically tell the client all the different things I'm going to be doing to ensure that when we do launch the website, everything is gonna be buttoned up and looking very professional so that there's no risk to their online reputation. Then we have a scope of work section. Here I just outline all the deliverables that I'm going to be responsible for. When I was first starting my freelance business, this was not something I was doing at all. But I do think it's very important that the client knows exactly what you're responsible for. It's also important that you tell the client clearly here what you're going to be responsible for. Because this way, if they try to increase the scope of work, which fortunately with my clients doesn't happen very often, but if it were to happen, you then have documentation you can fall back on. This might actually be the most important part of the entire proposal here is having these deliverables outlined. So you can see here, this is pretty simple pretty straightforward. This is for a recent, very small website project I took on. But for example, if you were doing a 10 page website, I would add in all the different pages we would have here. So because of this, it's also very important to nail down the scope of work with your client. So this way you can just easily add it to the proposal. Next, we're gonna have the project cost and payment structure here. So Bonsai will actually let you, if you wanted to, change the fee structure, for example. So you could have a single option, you could have them select packages, you could have them select multiple packages, whatever might be best for you. The contract I'll be showing you in a second has all this in a much more detailed way, but this is just giving the client the most important purchasing and details about the payments and how the costs will work and what the hourly rate is that things will be billed out if necessary. So this is just very important because this way you never want to bill something at an hourly rate afterwards and then the client had no idea what your hourly rate is. So it's very important that they understand what that is here. And then you can see here if you wanted to add additional rows. Sometimes, again, this is just a starting point. It's not what I send all the time. But for example, sometimes I'll bill based on the phase of the project. What I've done now though is, for example, if a project is going to have three payments, I will simply bill that month after month. So this way, every 30 days, I'm getting paid. It's much more efficient for cash flow. Before this, I would rely on milestone payments, which is good in theory, but then if the project gets delayed and it's not your fault, then you are waiting on payments. Then timeline, I do think it's very important for the client to know that you are going to be sticking to a tight timeline here. So basically what I break out is, depending on the project, I'll let them know how long I anticipate each of the main phases here taking. And then I will also outline all the different services that go into the phase. And then finally, I will tell them that basically this is uh, not a contract contract. We'll be looking at that shortly. This is just to green light the project and move forward. In the same email where I'll send the proposal, I will also send them this contract. Unfortunately, never had a client pick this apart and complain. I feel like most business owners or at least most marketing directors with a corporate background understand how all this works and it's not a problem. The main thing is that I will, as you can see here, I have directions for myself that I'll eventually remove. But the main thing here is just to paste in the deliverables, just like you saw on the proposal. So this is very straightforward here. And then the payments terms will get switched around depending exactly on what the payment terms for the particular project are and what the total cost of the project is. Then we'll have an hourly rate section here. So you can see I really do need to actually update this because my hourly rate is a lot higher these days. And then there's a bunch of other items in here. This is all like the legal stuff that I eventually got developed when I was first starting my business. I have since had to add things as things come up. For example, like a project cancellation fee, a project delay fee, all this type of stuff to protect yourself in case that they do happen. But it is very important for both you and your client to have this contract 
contract with Bonsai, you can digitally sign it so it makes it official and legit, legally, if you will. When it comes to send an invoice, so I believe I have a client in here I can use. We're then brought to this screen here where you can insert the name of the invoice here. You can put in all their details here. You can set when it's due for this type of project. I'll have it set to do upon receipt. Then I'll simply just break it out. Again, it all goes to the specific payment terms of the particular project, but I'll usually just say like per project deposit invoice. So then the invoice takes about two seconds to put together. And then in the email, I send them a proposal. I send them a contract both via Bonsai. Then I'll also use Descript to record a very quick overview of the proposal, just simply walking them through it. Finally, I will also send them a link to my calendar via Calendly, so that way, once they've reviewed all these documents and watched the screen recording presentation, if they still have any questions, they can book a meeting with me to discuss things further. But I find that the proposal presentation I talked about really has cut down on the need for a follow-up meeting, and I think just adds a lot more trust and appeal to working with me, and they can really see that it's going to be a very one-to-one -one personalized experience or working together with me to build a new or redesigned website for their company. And I do think that it has significantly helped in my conversion rate. So highly recommend that you put together a quick screen recording presentation when you send out proposals. It really puts your best foot forward and shows that you're serious about wanting to work with them and to help their company with their marketing and sales goals. So that's the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot of value out of it as always. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I appreciate you sticking around for this whole one. I don't know if it's very noticeable, but my voice is a bit hoarse. I've been under the weather recently, but the show must go on, whether I'm dealing with vocal issues or whether there's construction going on outside. If you have any questions or comments as a fellow web designer about my proposal process, definitely feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you with any well-intentioned thoughts that I have. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to subscribe because I'm putting out at least one video per week. There's going to be a ton of vlogs coming out, case studies, info-based topics, helping you be a web designer, as well as just casing my own work, and as well as just me giving my thoughts on the latest trends in the industry. So I would love for you to stick around and subscribe, introduce yourself in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.